Yo, this episode, Benny is on a rampage. Let's talk about the haves and the have nots. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny. Now, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information I have in the description box in the comment section. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And before I get started, check out um, my YouTube partner, BK World Tube, which is the Black Netflix. You get everything from love and hip hop to. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race, and even this show here, The Has and the Have Nots. So go check out BK World Tube today. Now, this is The Has and the Have Nots, Season 8, Episode 17, and the name of this episode is No More Time. This was a really good episode, and child, that ending was like, yo, what the hell is Benny gonna do? So, um, let me begin. The episode ups picks up where it left off. Veronica and Benny are on the phone. She tells him that she has information on Derek. Um, and she's like, well, how do you... He's like, how do you know this? Well, she says, um, well, his record is as long as your penis is. I'm like, <laughs> Veronica is such a whore. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> and, um... And pretty much, um... You know, he's like, how do you know all this? She's like, well, I'm the queen, and it's my job to do maintenance. Well, one, she actually represented, she actually represented, um, uh, what's his face? Um, Derek. So, Derek is one of her clients. <laughs> and you know how Veronica does with her clients. So, um, and then all of a sudden, he's like asking her for the address, and she's like, come on over. And he's, and he's like, just give me the address, Veronica. She's like, come on over. And he's like, okay, fine, I'm coming over. And she's like, good, stay angry because it turns me on. I'm like, Veronica, Veronica's a bitch in heat, and she just she just got an itch, and she want to scratch it, and she'll do it with anybody, even the muffin man who lives on Jury Lane. Like, there's just no stopping her. She wants somebody to stir up her, she wants somebody to stir up her lady bitch, child. So, we see that um, Benny tells Rihanna that he'll come back tomorrow because he has to take care of something. And we can see that, Vera that Brianna is shooken up um, because her phone keeps ringing. And we know it's that wankster ass Sandy pretty much bullying her. And it's just crazy. Then we get a scene with um, Catherine and... Um, Chief and I'm um, Chief Shepherd, and I think um, Chief Shepherd is actually related to Justin's family. Um, but uh, you know, because he's the chief of police, um, and pretty much, you know, him and Catherine go back and forth, and you know, he's pretty much saying that, uh, you know, um, you and like pretty much he's just letting her you know they go back and forth and he's letting her know like look you just need to you know get used to the fact that you're in here right now and and um you know we're just trying to get on the top of this and and you know Catherine's like you really playing games with me right now seriously do you know who I am and he's like uh yeah we all know who you are and then he announces to the jail who is she and they all said Catherine Cryer. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's kind of letting you know, like, bitch, you ain't got no power right now because you're in jail, and you, you know, you have no, you have no pull up in here. And then he was, and then she was like, I, and then you know, she's saying that, um, you know, don't ever underestimate me. And, he, and he's like, well, the thing is, you know, you're in here for killing the DA. And she says, I didn't do it. She's, and he's like, really? Then who did? And she says, Veronica Harrington. She's like, you got any proof? She's like, well, if you give me my call and let me call my lawyer, I will prove that she did it. And pretty much says, well, um, 
George the DA says that it's you. And he's saying that, you know, as far as this whole case, you know, this process can take months, you know. And due to the fact that you don't want to play ball, it could be a while before anything gets moved in regards to your case. And then he whispers to her, you should have given him the money. And pretty much that was the end of that and he walked off. And I'm like, damn. You know, but once Catherine gets her ammunition together, they're going to wish that they didn't fuck with her. And that's on some real shit. So... So then we get a scene with um, Veronica at her house. Um, she gets a knock on the door. She goes out to her patio and tells Samuel to answer the door that her um, that her camera in her house is broken. So he so he goes and answers the door. We come to find out it's Celine. So he lets Celine in and he goes to get him some water. Then Veronica and Celine go back and forth. Celine lets her know that I just got an eviction notice. Um, I had to pay the rent in three days and I owe twelve hundred. And and she was like, Really? You came over here to ask for twelve hundred? I ain't giving you no money. And she says, and I don't do sexual favors for clients, at least not female ones. I'm like, Veronica, if you don't stop if you don't get out your box for at least a minute. And, and then she says, also, my light bill, I owe $200, you know, um, you know, and she's like, you know what, just chill out, Celine, I'll call the judge to get it, and she's like, uh, well, great, thank you, she's like, you know what, you're pathetic, Celine, like, you come in to ask for, um, $1,400, seriously, like, girl, I can get you 50000 you know, this man left you stranded, and has not provided for your kids. I can make that happen. She, and she's like, you can? She's like, I'm Veronica, honey. You know, that's what I do. And then she pretty much says that now, you know, what you need to do is go home and wait for the call. And then we'll proceed. And she's like, and um, now, I know we need to look bad in front. Of, I know you need to look bad in front of the judge. But clearly you have that covered. But you need to kind of dress a little bit because you don't need to look this bad. Um, and I was just like, man, Veronica is evil as hell. And then she, um, you know, Celine ends up leaving. And then she starts on Samuel. Samuel and she's like, Samuel, um, do you are you good with electronics? And he's like, well, I'm okay, but I got a buddy that can actually, that's very good with it. She's like, well, you know what? Why don't you try it first? And if it and if um you can't work it out, then you can call your buddy. And then he's like, "Well, all due respect, you know, I I I can just go outside and take care of that." She's like, "You can just come through the house." And he's like, "But I'm covered in sweat." She's like, "Yes, I love that." Now I know you married, and I know you love your wife, and I know you won't cheat on her, and I'm not coming on to you, but I love sweat. Why <laughs> this horny? <laughs> Oh my god, Veronica was doing the most this episode, y'all. And she's like, come on now, come on. And then, we get a scene with Hannah. She's working through all of these papers trying to manage, you know, trying to learn financial management. And she calls this guy named Al, who's an accountant, but he actually goes to her church. Um, you know, her pastor recommended him. And he was like, oh yeah, um, he knows John, one of the other accountants that works with um, Catherine's estate. And he said that, um, yeah, he, pro he said that you'll probably call me. And, you know, then he's saying that, you know, I can come over or you can come here and I can help you out. And he was, she was like, okay. And she was like, well... You know, it's great that it's, I'm glad that the pastor referred me to you. And he was like, our pastor. She's like, oh, you go, to, you go to my church? And he was like, yeah, I see you there all the time. You know, I just never had the curse to say hi to you. He's like, well, you could have just said, hey. I'm like, look at her all flirting and everything with old guy. And definitely he was laying it on. She was like, well, how much I owe you for your um, expertise? And she's, he was like, nothing. But I'll take coffee. She's like, oh, coffee? Oh, that'll work for me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, Hannah. I mean, but hey, the guy, you know, the guy that is like, this is like the third guy that 
you know, there could be a possibility with, because, you know, Derek is done because we found out that Derek was her rapist. And then she found out that the um, detective that she was kind of falling for was actually, you know, working with Jim. And that Jim sicked her onto, onto her. So, you know, maybe third time's the charm. But then again, I kind of see he got, a, he got, I don't know what to make of him as of right now, but, you know, definitely he's fond of Hannah. So we're just going to see how that goes. Then finally, <laughs> Benny arrives at Veronica's house. Soon she heard a knock, her ass all scared and shit like, who is it? <laughs> I was cracking up. I was like, no, your ass ain't scared. You know, Queen B? Seriously? So, um, so pretty much she, um, she, he comes in and he's asking her for the address and she's like, well, what you going to give me? And he's like, what are you talking about? And, sh and she's like, look, this is negotiations, Benny. What am I going to get out of this? You know, what are you going to give me? And he was like, you know what? Go to hell. And she was like, oh, really? Well, if that's your attitude, then I don't really want to help you. He was like, well, fuck you then. And was about to leave. And then she gives him, she's like, Benny, get your ass over here. She gives him a file. And she pretty much says, your mother filed a police report, you know, you know, she used to be a pretty girl, but man, time has not been well to her because her, she has, you know, she has, um, you know, her face is now like her feet. And let's just say, um, you know, she has face for feet now. And, you know, and he's like, you know what? You need to stop that shit, Veronica. And, and then he, and then she lets him know that, you know, Derek was never arrested for the rape. There was a robbery that happened two blocks away, and he was charged for that. And the reason why she knows this is because she represented him in the case. Um, but he was saying that, but come on, you know, <clears throat> you know, um, I mean, t I mean, after all, you know, he, he did rape your mammy, and, you know, you know, I know how you are about, about your mammy and all that. He's like, call her a mammy one more time. He's like, what? She is a maid. She is the help. Like, come on. Like, you know, and he's like, look, are you going to give me the address or what? She's like, what you going to give me? You know what? I know you missed this. Mmm. And he's like, you know what? You're sick. And he's like, no, boo-boo. She's like, no, boo-boo. Your mama's face is sick. That's what's sick. Your mama's face. And then she starts going into your mama's so, uh, your mama's so dumb she thought a quarterback was a refund. And then your mama's so broke that, oh, never mind. He'll be back. <laughs> oh, my God, Veronica is such a damn mess. Then we get a scene with Justin and Tanner. Um, he pretty much tells Justin that, I'm sorry I, I hit you. You look banged up. Who did it? He wouldn't tell him who actually did it. But then he was like, but I, I, I am going to work on this. And I, I, I am going to make this right. And he was like, fine. So can we finally go and tell your wife that you're not going to do this anymore? And then he was like, yes. Yes, he's like, Tanner, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix all of this. And he was like, you know, I love you. And Justin tells him he loves him too. But then we kind of look at the pictures. It's Je he looks at the pictures of Jeffrey, you know, the shrine that he made of him. And I'm like, yeah, he's going to do some crazy shit. So we just got to keep watching Justin. Because Justin ain't trying to go back to his family or anything like that. But we know he is scared and intimidated of his brother Tanner. So... We just got to keep watching and see what's going to happen with that. But yeah, we definitely see that Justin ain't letting Jeffrey go. So, Jeffrey, you in danger, girl. <laughs> Alright, so, then we see that David um, goes to see Jim at the hospital. He pretty much says that, yeah, I found the car, but there was no Wyatt. And then... Um, and then he pretty much said that, yeah, I ran into Sandy, and Sandy's a hothead. You know, Mitch is the more cooler one. And then Jim was like, yeah, if you think so. Yeah, because Mitch shook your ass down. That's why you feel that way, Jim. You know, shook you down for that 75000 And then Jim notices that the car has moved and is at the parking lot at the loft. 
And I'm like, oh, hell, who the hell got the damn car and who the hell's at the loft? So I think in due time we'll find that out. We don't know because last time we saw Wyatt, Wyatt was down in the basement. The question is, did Vinny let him go? Or did Wyatt escape? But usually when you go down to the basement, you ain't escaping unless they let you out. And sometimes you never leave the basement. Just saying. So they noticed that the car is at the parking lot at the loft. And he's like, I thought they, I thought we sold that place. So I think um, this is going to bring Broderick back into the picture. So we just got to stay tuned. And then he also tells... Um, David to check on Catherine and see what's going on with her. Um, and then we see the doctor comes in. His name is Dr. Danny. And of course, you know, uh, the Harringtons as well as um, the criers are on the board of the hospital. So they know all the doctors. Um, and, and pretty much, um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Jim tells the doctor, like, look, just give me some meds and get me the hell out of here. When am I getting out of here? He's like, first of all, you need to rest. And, you know, the thing is, you know, you know, I just can't give you a whole bunch of meds to send you home. And he's like, you know, what? What are you, what are you trying to say? You're like, I'm gonna have a problem with addiction or something? And he was like, How's Wyatt? <laughs> like, everybody know the damn Wyatt is a junkie from hell. And he's like, Well, he's doing great, doctor. You know, everything's okay, and all this shit. And I'm like, There you go with your damn line. But um. But yeah, so that happened. Around the same time, Jeffrey meets Madison. <laughs> I lived for this scene. This scene was so damn funny. He meets Madison and Jeffrey is just smiling. He's like, why are you smiling? It's because we had a great night and a great morning. I'm like, yeah, y'all been fucking like jackrabbits. And then all of a sudden, he was like, well, the thing is, um, when I got out the shower, I saw a naked man in your apartment. And he was like... What you what you talking about me? He, he was like, no, him. And then the elevator opens, and then you see Kobe with probably like, hello. <laughs> I, was, I was like, Kobe messy as shit. And and all of a sudden he was like, uh, uh, Kobe. And Madison was like, uh, Kobe. Um, what were you doing naked in my apartment? We talked about that. He's like, well, yeah, but you told me, um. That if you had a boyfriend, then we would stop. And he's like, well, I have somebody now. He's like, that's funny because he told me y'all were just friends. And he was like, really? And he was like, yeah, I said that. He's like, well, we need to talk about that. Like, Madison, really? Because first of all, y'all never admitted that you two were exclusive. You know, if anything, you just told him how much you wanted him. And you've been, you know, humping him like a jackrabbit ever since. I mean, obviously sex is good because you had Jeffrey doing splits and doing handstands up in the bed. So obviously, y'all were just having great sex. But y'all never really had that conversation whether y'all were going to be in a relationship or not. But then we could definitely see that definitely Madison felt some kind of way and the fact that Kobe was rubbing it in didn't make it any better so he goes to push the elevator it's like you know we're gonna go out for lunch um Jeffrey and you know Kobe you're paying he's like oh really he's like but then again you know he is cute though I mean I mean hell you know I mean I saw what he what he was working with when he was in the shower honey and, and he was like, and he saw me, and he's like, and what do you guys do? He's like, you want to tell him what we did? And then all of a sudden, Madison feels some kind of way and starts pressing the elevator. He's like, you know what? He's like, come on, you're in the high seat, and you know how you like being in the high seat, Madison. He's like, and, and then Jeffrey was like, um, pushing that pushing that, pushing that um, button hard is not going to make it come any faster. Well, <laughs> Kobe was like, well, actually, it usually does. <laughs> I'm like, them damn queens had me cracking up. They were doing the most. So then we get this crazy scene with Sandy and Mitch. Sandy, with his wankster punk ass, is literally in his feelings. Mitch comes in there looking for the family. And he's talking about something. You make me sick. 
I can't stand you. Because of you, I'm stuck in this shit. You know, who's going to carry the family name? You only want to come over here and ask for favors, but you don't want to join the family, but you always want favors from the family. You know what? I can't stand you, and I can't stand that bitch. And he was like, what bitch? Because if, because I'm no, Mitch is thinking he's talking about Candace. He's like, what bitch? He's like, Brianna, all right? He's like, dude, I told you to leave that girl alone, dude. You need to move on. He's like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm like, dude, you just can't take rejection with your wankster ass. So, finally, Benny shows up, and immediately Sammy starts talking his shit. Really? Really? And then, all of a sudden, like, um, Benny approaches Mitch. He's like, you lied to me. You know, where's his address? He's like, what are you talking about? I can't just get his address. Yes, you can. You can get his address. Why you lie to me? Huh? Huh? What? You, you, your family's protecting him? He's like, no, my family's not protecting him. If anything, we're trying to stop you from doing something crazy. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to find him myself. <clears throat> he's like, what? Did Candace put you up to this? He's like, look, dude, we don't want you to do nothing stupid. He's like, you know what? Forget this. I'll find him myself. I don't need you. I don't need nobody. I'm gone. And all of a sudden, then Sandy and Mitch really get into it. It's like, see, that's what I'm talking about. You you letting these blacks come up in here and shit. You always doing some bullshit, Mitch. I can't stand your ass. And then he's going back and forth with him. And Mitch was like, man, if you don't sit your punk wannabe gangster punk ass down, dude, ain't nobody in, like. Like, get the fuck out of here with this shit. Like, dude, you can't even measure up, and that's the reason why you flipping. And you need to calm your ass down, because I'll whoop your little ass. And he's like, dude, I'm not afraid of you, just because you, cause you, just because you 6'8". I ain't scared. He's like, bruh, you need to sit your ass down. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> Mama Rose need to tell you who your real father is. I was like, oh shit. He's like, what? He's like, yeah. He's 5'4", just like you, and he's a bitch, just like you, too. And walked off. I was like, uh-huh. It'd be real funny that he really um, ain't got that Malone blood as strong as he thinks. So I was like, that, that scene was everything. Then we get this scene where Landon and Charles, and he's playing with the kids, and, you know... They're talking to the kids about living in the White House and everything. And we see that Landon has built a strong relationship with the children. And Charles is pleased with everything. And he tells Landon, thank you, you know, for helping me out with the kids, you know. Um, but then he's like, are you doing this because you're hoping we can be together? He was like, look, I made peace with that. I mean, just because I was attracted to you don't mean that I'm just going to, you know, throw myself down and just do whatever I mean I actually do care about my position and I do care about you and yeah I do have in and, and then pretty much you know um so then why so then I'm um, Landon I'm sorry so Landon asked the question to Charles um are you having feelings for me and he was like yes he's like not those kind of feelings I'm like Charles you need to stop playing with that boy because it's kind of given like the vibe that you do, you are feeling him slightly. But then again, you're not going to cross that line because you are the president elect. And you all are, you all, you are all about controlling the optics. Let's just keep it 100. But then he says, I trust you. And then he was, and then, um, and then Landon was like, of course, you know, I will never betray you. And he said that, yeah, that's the same thing that Judas said to Jesus. He's like, but I know Judas. And he's like, um, <clears throat> and he's, and then like Landon asked again, like Landon is fishing because Landon does still have feelings for Charles and it's evident. He's like, can I ask you another question? You know, I, I feel like I'm special to you. You know, because I've, I mean, even though I'm gay, I mean, I've never had just guy friends. So it's like, so we are friends, right? Because I feel like we're friends, you know. And he's like, yeah, you know, we're friends as long as you do your job and you don't cross the line. So that was going on. And then we get that scene with, Lan with Landon and that messy ass Oliver. Because, you know, Oliver got a kill following Candace. So... All of a sudden, Oliver comes in, special to me and special to you. I'm like, you are so fucking messy. Oh, with his punk ass. Oh, dumbass cokehead. Like, he was just doing the most. Oh, um, 
So I see you're involved with the kids and everything. You're still in love with him, aren't you? He's like, yes. And he's like, yeah. And that's going to be a problem. Len is like, well, unlike you, I'm a professional. And, you know, you need to just get the hell out of my office. Um, <clears throat> and then he starts talking about um, Candace. And he lets him know, like, well, I got the goods on Candace. She's staying at this fancy motel in Savannah. And one of these... Um, one of the mafia guys went in there to see her. You know, he's a Malone. So, she's back to her old tricks and all of that. And and then, he's, then he mentions the drugstore. He's like, you know what? What? And he's like, oh, we're quiet now, aren't we, Landon? I'm like, Oliver is forever fucking with him. And then um, he's like, you know what? Just get the hell out of here. He's like, fine. And he's like, I can't stand that little bastard. Ugh. I'm like, yeah, because he definitely knows a lot more information than you do. He says that he, he was telling him that he was getting this from a reporter. But really, it's because he has a kill following him, following her, and a kill is reporting back to him. But I'm still thinking, you know, I wonder if Conley is actually um, Oliver's dad. But we just have to keep watching. Then we get the crazy scene at the end of this episode where Benny goes to Catherine's house, knocks on the door, Hannah opens it, and he's like, Veronica told me the truth about Derek. And she's like, what? He's like, oh, really? You're not going to do anything about this? You're just going to let him get away with this? And she's like, Benny, you need to leave this shit alone. And she's like, I'm not letting him get away with anything. But you need to leave this alone. You need to take your ass off of this woman's property before I call the police. And I'm not here for your bullshit. He's like, you need to tell me his address. And I'm not going to leave until you give me his address. She's like, get that man back his money. Oh, okay. And she just like slammed the door in Benny's face. And lo and behold, what ends up happening, damn Derek pulls up. And immediately, Benny walks to the car and starts banging on the damn car. And Derek is like, I'm like, oh, shit. Benny's on a rampage. And from the looks of what happens next week, Benny did something to Derek. The question is what? So, that's what I have, y'all. If I miss anything, get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on it. But yeah, the have and have nots is starting to get pretty good. You know, Tyler is starting to really move these storylines. So I'm at the edge of my seat wondering what's about to happen next. So until next time, everybody, take care.